Hi, I'm Andy Acker, Director of Education for Schluter Systems. And I'm Brian Bouchard, Regional Manager for the Northeast. So today we're going to be covering uh, steam showers and the ceilings in steam showers. And we're actually going to show you two different ways where you can waterproof and make them vapor tight. So these are going to be within specs of not only the industry but Schluter Systems also here. It's important to follow the specs. So we do have a shower system installation handbook and that is important that you follow that. We're going to be demoing straight out of that handbook here, Brian. So this first installation, we're actually showing cement board that's already installed and we're going to be covering that with the Curdy DS. Okay, so the DS, we already have it on the walls here. Uh, you can see that uh, it's been overlapped here. We're going to cover it and put it on the ceiling here. Uh, DS does meet the requirements of being less than one half of a perm. A perm is how much vapor and moisture will pass through over a given amount of time. So Curdy uh, DS does actually meet that less than half of a perm. Yeah, it actually comes in at 0.19, so it's quite a bit lower than the 0.5 requirement. And since it's that low, then we don't need to put any kind of vapor barrier behind the panel. It's, this is going to be not only our waterproofing, but also our vapor uh, barrier right here on top. So let's get started and put this up. All right. Okay, so I've got a piece of DS here, just like the stuff that's on the walls. So to begin with, it's always a good idea. This is backer board, concrete backer board. It can be very thirsty, so it's a good idea to give it a little drink of water. So Brian's got a sponge and water here, and he's just lightly applying a little bit of moisture into that board. Uh, it's going to soak that right up, and then we'll be ready to apply our thin set. Now the thin set that we're going to use on here can be any of the Schluter uh, thin sets or it can be any of the non-modified thin sets that are on the market here. So a little moisture there and now a, a trowel. This actual trowel that uh, Brian's using here does say Curdy right on it, but it's about an 8 by 8 square notch, 3 16 V notch, somewhere in there is going to give you the right amount of, of coverage, the right amount of thin set. It's always a good idea, Andy, to use the flat side of the trowel first to really get a good bond to the substrate. Right, it's a good practice, tile setting 101, to burn the thin set into the substrate. It's going to be very important here. Backer board, a ceiling, uh, this is going to be important that we get it on here. It also is great, Brian, because when you get the thin set applied, to the substrate, whether it's a, a, a wall or a ceiling in this case, then you're going to have a fresh coat of thin set because the last thing you're going to do is turn the trowel around to the notch side and gauge how much we're going to leave. So this is one way to, to make certain that you don't get a dry spot because if you start it over here and had it all spread out, including notch trowel, gauging how much thin set, by the time he gets over there, this might start to flash. So one of the tips, get the stuff out of the bucket, get it burned onto the substrate, and get that all done first, and then we'll actually uh, spread it out. So here's the DS. Uh, this DS is a little bit thicker material, a little bit different composition as far as the material from the regular Curdy. That's one of the ways that it meets that extra perm rating requirement that just happened a few years back uh, in the U.S. I'm not sure about in Canada, but it's important that we get that. So here we're just going to apply it to the ceiling. I'll hold that up so you don't have to fight it too much, Bryant. You just sort of place it in. There we go. Get it positioned about where you want it. You can see that it clings to the thin set. The thin set's fairly loose consistency. Uh, it's looser than you would typically use uh, to set tile, uh, but it's still uh, stiff enough to hold a notch. That's just where you want it. That would be the, the perfect spot as far as the consistency of the thin set. Uh, so we can lay that up and it clings to a hold of it just nice. But there's no reason to evacuate out excess thin set from underneath the Curdy DS, uh, all that that we left underneath there with the proper notch trowel can stay there. All we're going to do is firmly embed the membrane 
into the bond coat, knocking down the ribs that were left by the notch trowel and eliminating any kind of uh, blisters or, or bubbles uh, of air underneath there. And that's all it's going to take to get it in there tight. All right, so that, that Curdy DS is already applied. That's all it takes to do that. Now, we do have a couple of options here when it gets to the seam here, Brian. Yeah, we could have uh, just folded this piece of Curdy DS to come down and cover this joint right here by two inches. Two inches down, or? But we're going to use the five inch Curdy band, and we've already folded it. And then we would apply our thin set with the same notch trowel and then embed the curdy band into that thin set and use the flat knife to smooth it out. And it would go just like that. Yep, exactly. No need to shingle lap because any way you overlap two inch minimum, you're gonna have a nice vapor tight and waterproof seal there. And there's Absolutely. also no need to have to use a, a, a DS for curdy band. Curdy band does not come in DS because it's not a requirement. This regular curdy band from our our normal Curdy products uh, will do that seam right there. Absolutely. All right, so that's how you treat that ceiling here when the backer board's on already. Uh, again, remember to follow the specifications. Uh, the next one that we're going to do. Yep, we're going to use the Curdy board and we'll cover that with the Curdy DS as well. So okay. we'll show that next. So that's next. Okay, so here's the second option that we had mentioned earlier. The first one was over CBU and we put Curdy DS directly to that. Here's a little bit different. We have just the studs, the metal studs in this case. Right. The other thing you'll notice, Andy, that's missing is there is no vapor barrier because as we mentioned earlier, the Curdy DS does waterproofing and is our vapor barrier. Okay, so we have about two inches per foot of slope, that's a requirement, that's part of the spec, you always want to follow the specifications, industry specs, and Schluter system specs. We do have a shower system installation handbook that does have a commercial steam room detail in it, so that's always good to refer to that. We're going to do some of the demo right out of that handbook here. So metal studs, uh, we have the R value proper in here for the ceiling and it isn't behind the walls, and we're going to put the Curdy board right up on here. Yeah, so this time, instead of CBU, we're using 5 8 Curdy board. Much lighter, easier to cut, and really fast to install. Okay, you can see we've already put a little mark here on six inches on center, uh, just to speed things up when we have it up onto the ceiling. So All right. Put it in place. You got it over there? Yeah, I'll hold it for you while you get started here. So we're putting our washer in place. That's going to uh, even out the, uh, the fastener to help support the panel. As I said, six inches on center is the, is the spacing for the washer onto the studs. We're using a self-tapping metal screw. And those screws have to be long enough that they actually go into the metal stud a minimum of three-eighths of an inch. Just embed the washer into the board a little bit. So it doesn't get into the way uh, of, uh, of the trowel when we go to, to spread on there. Okay, now all the fasteners are in, six inches on center. Uh, they're going into the metal stud, a minimum of three eighths of an inch. Uh, we've used the washers. They've embedded just a little bit so it gets out of the way of the, of the trowel when you comb on there. Those will be filled with a little thin set as we go on to the next step, which is to put the Curdy DS membrane that we already have on the wall over here onto the ceiling. So we'll start the process by getting the thin set out of the bucket and up onto the ceiling. The technique here is to get the thin set out of the bucket on the ceiling and what's called burning it in to the sur surface here. That makes certain we have good contact, not only on the points of the notch trowel here, but over the entire surface of the, of the trowel is embedding the thin set into the, into the substrate here. Another nice thing about using this technique is you notice that Brian hasn't actually gauged the thin set with the notch side of the trowel yet. He's simply getting a thin set 
onto the surface. Then he's going to turn around and use the notch side to, to gauge how much thin set he's going to leave. Uh, this thin set is a little looser than you would typically use to set tile. Uh, it's still stiff enough to hold a notch, but it's fairly loose consistency, fluid consistency, because you'll see in a minute when we go to put the DS on here is that we want those ribs that are going to be left by the notch trowel to knock down and flow into each other. Okay, so we have all the thin set spread onto the ceiling with an 8 by 8 square, about 3 16 V notch. That's going to be just about the right amount of thin set. So it's time to put the DS in place. So you take that in and I'll grab this. Now the technique to put DS on a ceiling or any surface is to kind of place it in. Get it roughly where you want it. And you can see with the, the fleece, that's embedded on the on the Curdy DS, any of our Curdy products, that it grabs a hold of the thin set readily, so you're not going to have to fight it to hold it onto the ceiling. And the consistency of the thin set helps it really bond quickly. So you sort of place it, get it roughly where you want, and now you can see the technique here is you just firmly embed the membrane into the bond coat, knocking down any ribs, any of the notch trowel marks, and removing any air bubbles that could be underneath it. And that's simply how you put the membranes on. Another nice technique is to use directional troweling. You notice when Bryant was troweling, he smoothed all the thin set out and gauged how much thin set he was leaving on the ceiling, all in one direction. And then when he used the broad knife or a flat trowel, finished trowel, whatever you'd like, he's knocking those ribs down underneath the curdy, and that's going to happen a little bit easier if all the trowel marks are in the same direction. So we've got that on now. All right, so there's the Curdy DS applied directly over the Curdy board. So that's all ready to go, but we have one more spot here, don't we? Yeah, we want to waterproof this corner, so we're going to use the five inch Curdy band to adhere it to both sides of the DS, the wall side and the ceiling side to make sure that's waterproof and vapor proof as well. Now we had an option. We could have actually used two inches of this Curdy DS we put on the ceiling and turned this corner here and ran it down the wall that two inches minimum by doing that. So either way you could do that, but in this case we're going to actually use some of our Curdy band. This is five inch wide Curdy band and we folded it lengthwise down the middle so we know we're going to easily meet that two inch overlap requirement. So we have two and a half on each side. You'll also notice as we put this on, there's no correct way as far as what overlaps which piece. There's no right or wrong. You could have either one a lap over the other one. As long as you have that two inch, we're good to go. So that's nice for the installer because it's up to you, the sequence of when you install the Curdy band. You just make certain you have that minimum two inch overlap. So again, the same notch trowel as we use for the Curdy DS. We're using that same small Curdy trowel, 8 by 8 square, 3 16 V, somewhere right there to gauge the proper amount that we're going to leave on there. Now that we have that in place, you can see that we've folded this down the middle, give it a little bit of a memory. We just sort of hold it in place. Again, Not a lot of effort or fuss to put that in, and then you firmly embed it into that bond coat, knocking down the ribs. And that's treating the seams there. You can start to see the thin set work its way through there. It's working its way up into the fleece so you know you're going to get a good overlap and a good bond of that material in there. Okay, so there's the second option. We have put the Curdy DS over the top of the Curdy board here and that far exceeds the requirements for a steam room. Yeah, the requirement from the industry is 0.5 for a perm rating and this actually comes in at 0.19. So quite a bit less. Andy. Quite a bit lower than you need for a commercial setting like this. So there you go. We've got that one on. We watched the other one over the CBU. 
Remember to always follow the written instructions that you'll find in the Schluter Systems installation handbook for showers, and we have a specific detail for commercial steam rooms in there. Right. So thanks again for watching. Thank you.